Step into the ring, it's time to rock the night. Sergeant Slaughter's here, ready for the fight. Do you tell a man with his gold and his flare? We've been through it all, we've gone everywhere. Wrestle Rock! Hi everyone, you're watching the Wrestle Rock Podcast Season 6. I'm Johnny D and I'm hosting this episode with my partner, Nostrada Ben. How's you going today, my friend? Yeah, I'm doing well. Oh, yes, I'm going super great. You know what? No, going. You're two weeks away. Yes. Adam Bomb. Yes, uh, in uh, collaboration with uh, the live uh, wrestling auctions, everyone uh, don't miss uh, the event of uh, Brian Clark will be there on October 18 in Montreal for the first time in 25 years. Oh, uh, 25 yes, years. so the tickets are available now on Eventbrite and don't miss that but. Today, we have a special guest, and I'm very proud uh, to uh, to having him, uh, honestly, because, God damn, he is so talented. Uh, he is uh, the former uh, GHC Hardcore Openweight Champion, but also GHC, GHC Junior, Junior heavyweight. heavyweight Champion, and in my heart, he is... Uh, one of the best eye flying uh, men on the planet. Give it up, everyone, for Ninja Mac. Yeah. Good morning, yo. Wrestle hey. Rock Podcast. How y'all doing today? Yes, we're going super great. And as we discussed uh, just before uh, the recording session, uh, first of all, thank you uh, so much uh, for accepting our invitation. It's super appreciated. Uh, everyone, Ninja Mac is very busy. He, uh, he, he wrestled uh, for the New Japan Pro Wrestling, uh, Pro Wrestling Noah, Dragon Gate, um, also with the GCW, AAA, AAA Ring of Honor, and name it. So, Go ahead with the first question because uh, Ninja Mac, you know, uh, between you and me, Ninja Mac is an acrobat. Uh, yes, but also he has been involved with a, a company um, from Quebec uh, who has been created in Quebec City, but uh, it's worldwide now. I'm talking about uh, Le Cirque du Soleil. So go ahead with the first question, my yeah, friend. Yeah, of course. Uh, okay, uh, Mr. Uh, can I call you Ninja? Can I call you Mac? Uh, <laughs> Either's good. I'm I'm not picky on either. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Before your uh, career in pro wrestling, you worked for uh, Le Cirque du Soleil. How did you get uh, recruited by, for them? By them? Well, you know, uh, getting out of college, uh, first year finishing college, uh, I realized sitting in a classroom wasn't my best option. Just with what I've done physically growing up, so I actually went to Vegas for one of the Cirque du Soleil tryouts. Okay. And, you know, uh, got into their system. Uh, I floated around a couple circuses. I did the Michael Jackson workshop for Cirque Soleil. Okay. And, you know, that kind of broke me into doing the circus jobs for a couple years before I switched over to pro wrestling. Wow. Ooh. And um, we know that you have uh, a martial arts skills uh, such as uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, gymnastic, uh, mixed martial arts, of yes, course, Muay Thai. <laughs> Uh, capoeira, if my memory is good. So, do you believe these skills uh, complement your pro wrestling career? Of course, I, I believe uh, being uh, being universal in every aspect, since uh, pro wrestling is very entertainment, but also very physical. Mm -hmm. So, when you when you apply some jujitsu, muay thai, kickboxing, it can all translate into that wrestling world. And just like the circus, the acrobatic stuff will help with that wrestling yeah, world, indeed. also. So I believe a lot of it's very universal. Nice. 
All right. Uh, you trained and debuted at uh, Booker T's uh, Reality of Wrestling, of course, uh, Re Reality of Wrestling School. <laughs> uh, can you share one of your uh, wrestling camp highlights? Uh, why did you take the decision to become a pro wrestler? You know, uh, I, I always was a fan growing up. I watched it as a child, as I got into that college year and I was doing the circus jobs. You know, you keep in touch with it, but I wasn't fully involved. And then there was a pro indie pro wrestler on one of my last circus shows. Okay. And he, he recommended that I, I look at a school. And he just said, you got to go to California. You got to go to Houston and Texas or Orlando and Florida. That's where the best schools are. And I just I just happened to be from Houston, Texas. And that's where I live. So that, when I got home, I, I gave Booker T's Reality of Wrestling School a call. I got in touch with Kevin, their lead producer. And it, it took it took two days. Two days I was at Booker T's Reality Wrestling School for one of their first fantasy camps. Okay. And I never looked back at the circus. I just continued forward with pro wrestling since then. Wow. And uh, in the early stages of your uh, career, you wrestle under the name uh, Brendan uh, Sky in uh, A Capoeira Kid. Could you explain uh, the transition from the, the, the Brendan Sky and A, Cap a Capoeira Kid to uh, your current uh, Ninja Mac gimmick? Yeah, you know, when uh, Booker T was such a... Uh, influence that you, when you come into pro wrestling and you're kind of undecided uh, he, he'll give you the best start and he thought you know you're going to be attacking from the sky so why not would you roll with a name brennan sky you kind of relate to the person but also relate to what you're doing in the ring capoeira okay. kid was kind of a name given to me after booker t school in texas i did so much lucha libre with There's so many luchas down here that I was doing a lot of wrestling with Lucha Libre in Texas down in Mexico. And I want I wasn't I was still unsure of what I wanted to name myself, how I wanted to wrestle. So it, it kind of it kind of was given to me. I used to walk out with no name, but I would wear the Capoeira colors on my pants. Okay. The the reggae colors mm -hmm. and the the lucha libre wrestlers promoters started calling me Capoeira Kid. It was a name that just kind of stuck after doing many shows. And, you know, uh, I, I feel like putting it all together, learning for a couple years from a, a very professional school with a, a very TV visual to learning Lucha Libre. When I evolved into the Ninja Mac character, that was finally a decision I made. I felt like it was it was me. I was always doing ninja stuff since I was an early age kid. Uh, always fascinated with Ninja Turtles, Three Little Ninjas, Power Rangers. Nice. Uh, even going back to Liger and Hayabusa, Ray Mysterio with the wrestlers, you know, mass wrestlers. Mm -hmm. So it only made sense that, you know, you, you, you take what you, you're kind of involved with and, and you morph it in your own as a wrestler. Mm -hmm. Totally, totally. Okay, yeah. you recently worked with the Heli Iho del Vikingo. Do you think you had a good chemistry and a strong match with him? You know, I, I, I think it could be better. Um, with, with, I think we connected very well, but at the same time, when you have two guys that are such high level athletes, the, the more times we can get in the ring and wrestle each other, the matches are only going to get better and more competitive. And, you know, for, to be our first match, uh, actually that would be our second match. Our first match one-on-one -on -one in GCW. My, my first involvement with him was when I did the triple A, I believe it was a big six person scramble down in Mexico, Yeah. but yeah. I, I was still very limited in interactions with him. But when we had that one-on-one -on -one in GCW. I mean, for the, for the amount of time we were given, it, it was a very good match. I just, I just feel like when you're in front of a lot more people, you're given a lot more freedom and time uh, and you're able to wrestle each other a little more frequently, your, your matches are only going to get better and more competitive. About your highlight, uh, I remember you team up with uh, Ultimo Dragon uh, last year for the Pro Wrestling uh, Noah special event. The, the I'm talking about the the, the well, sorry, the retirement uh, show for uh, Great Muta. How did you uh, did you feel uh, to team with one of the the most uh, significant junior heavyweight uh, in the world? Oh, of course, the guy's a legend. He's been doing it so long at such a high level, and he's still going. Um, he's 
he's one of the best that's been able to do it. And at his age to be able to still go at the way he does just proves how good he was. He was awesome. And to, to be able to tag team with him, uh, I can't thank pro wrestling Noah enough. They gave me so many opportunities to tag with great, great names and great wrestlers. Awesome. Awesome. And okay, yeah, uh, yeah. you've, uh, you've wrestled in the uh, game changer wrestling. Yeah. Uh, Uh, mm -hmm. many many times uh, have you ever uh, wrestled in uh, some uh, dead matches i've i've stayed away from death matches i made that very clear with bread and gcw okay. Uh, okay. not that i'm against it but i do feel I, i feel when you go into that death match world you need to be ready to go 100 percent And as a ninja and as martial artist as I am, I, if you put me in a death match, I'm coming out with ninja stars. I'm coming out with a sword. Yeah. I'm coming out with nunchucks with spikes on them. And uh -huh. I just feel like it, I, I just feel like it's not going to end up well for me or my opponent. So mm -hmm. it's something I have kind of stayed away from. I'm not against it, though. I just I haven't found the right moment, the right match and the right time. But between you and me, uh, during a wrestling show, I'd say that makes sense what you uh, what you said because uh, a, a, a pro wrestling show it's like uh, a dinner if you know what I mean. So you start <laughs> with uh, the appetizer, um, with uh, the, the 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 main um, vegetable soup. Yes, a veg mm. vegetable <laughs> soup. With, uh, for example, uh, the the. The main plate uh, with the dessert, so you need to have different uh, styles and stuff like that. So you are not necessarily um, on this uh, section of uh, of our card, if you know what I mean. So you are um, plus uh, ac acrobatic. You have uh, athletic and. You are on the, the 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 lightweight division, if you know what I mean. So that that totally makes sense that uh, there is different division, and you are the best on uh, on your division, if you know what I mean. So that's uh, that's what I I wanted. Uh, well, um, we would like to discuss about uh, your uh, short career in. Uh, Uh, Triple A AAA in Mexico because uh, I uh, we saw you a couple of times in Triple uh, A, of course. But um, the question I have in my mind uh, since a uh, few months: so why did you choose the name uh, Kamikaze when you uh, wrestled in uh, Mexico? Well, I believe um, just going back to legal rights, I believe Triple A had a ninja previously. Oh, and, okay. Okay. And the the ninja name, I think, coming back to legal rights, wasn't uh, wasn't available. And I didn't want to just go out as okay. Matt. But um, you know that that first year with GCW when I did AAA, I was running as two characters. Um, I, I was really trying to grind out wrestling and learn as much as I could, as quick as I could. So Ninja Mac was my my good guy, my loud, my obnoxious, flippy guy. Uh, Kamikaze, that red ninja, was actually my my heel character, my bad guy. Where you know it's kind of a split personality, where I get a little more serious, my blood sport style. I'm not screaming across the ring as much. It's a it's a little more ver uh, vicious MMA style when I do Kamikaze. So it was it was a way for me to it was a way for me to get one double double matches on the show because that was my goal i was really trying to work twice three times on a show if possible and instead of trying to go out there as the same character the same person two or three times well you know i could switch mask colors switch personalities and really show my my death in uh wrestling where i could wrestle as a good guy wrestle as a bad guy and in, in lucha i always felt being the american coming into mexico you, you, it's very easy to switch over to the bad guy role um oh, so dude. for me to switch right into the kamikaze name when they said hey ninja's taken you can't use that name right now i just i threw them my my split ego name nice nice okay uh, do you prefer to wrestle uh, in japan mexico or uh, north america and why no um The, the last two years spent in Japan has been great. I love Japan. It's It's been phenomenal. Um, you know, it, it, each area has its perks. You know, North America, you, 
uh, one, they say North America has the money in pro wrestling, so the money's always good. Fans are all over the place. You can have such a variety of fans. When you're in Mexico, it's such a not hostile environment, but there's a lot more energy. The crowd's standing up. The crowd will still throw stuff at you if you're doing a good enough job or, or a bad enough job in the ring. So that, that energy of having that lucha crowd next to you is is something unmatched. And then in Japan, they're very, very respectful. They're very attentive. They're not going to stare at their phones in the matches. Uh, and if you're a good enough wrestler, they're going to come see you at the end of the show at your merch tables. So if, if you're doing good enough and you're working hard enough out of that respect, the Japanese people are going to really come see you. And those merch lines really show who's over at a show. Um, so it, it's very hard to pick. I, like I said, I've, I've wrestled all over the world so far, and I can't say there's just one spot that's my favorite. And even going to Europe and uh, UK, just to throw them out there, man, I first time I wrestled there, they had songs for me. And, and they're singing songs for the wrestlers. So, you know, every little area has their own little niche, and the, uh, the fans are amazing. They keep us alive, and they keep us supportive. Did you wrestle in Australia? I have not wrestled in Australia yet. Oh, that is somewhere I would love to wrestle. Oh, yeah. Yes, I remember you wrestled in, in Europe because uh, you are a former WXW shotgun champion uh, for a couple of days, if my memory is good, but I remember that, so uh, that's, that that's was awesome. So um, we are now on our uh, pre-closing segment, and I will give you a names, and in a few words, tell me something about them, all right? So uh, the first one, AJ Styles. Phenomenal man. I mean, just in his name alone. Uh, I got the honor to meet him at the Pro Wrestling Noah show when he wrestled Marifuji. Uh, the, the guy was very welcoming and opening book and opened the doors for me to ask any questions I need. Yes, he is very awesome. Uh, the second one, uh, and you, um, you had a, a couple of confrontation uh, with him. And if my memory is good, He is probably your one of your wrestling teachers. So I'm talking about uh, Loki. Yes, actually, tomorrow, VIP, Dallas, yeah. Texas. Yes. I have a match with Loki yeah. and Two Cold Scorpio. Big three-way match going on. Yeah. So if you're in the Dallas area, please awesome. come out and watch the show. Um, you know, Loki, um, I, I got a special connection with just because... When I really got into the ninja character and that, that martial art background, I was able to meet him at a GCW show. And that moment I met him, it, it's we clicked. Uh, if I if I have a question or if I need someone I need to go to, that's the man I'm going to. Cool. He really helped me going into Japan. So uh, much love and much appreciation for Loki. He, he's such a talented but ruthless hard worker. The guy, the guy works his ass off. The third one, Rey Mysterio Jr. The the pinnacle. Any any mass wrestler. That's to to me. You know, if if my name could be mentioned with Rey Mysterio at the end of my career, that that would be such an honor. Even if, <laughs> even if I could get to 10% of what Rey's done, the guy the guy has set the bar for any high flyer, any any small wrestler coming mm -hmm. in. Uh, it, if he's not on your Mount Rushmore, I. For a yeah. guy that's done it for 30 years, the money he's made, the matches he's put on, and he's still going and still relevant. Uh, he, he's a mastermind in the ring. Nothing but great things for Rey Mysterio. And about the Mount Rushmore, he figure uh, on the Mount Rushmore, I'm talking about Ayabuza. Uh, I mean, just looking at the mask right now, my. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 Hey. My, uh, a lot so, of influence. A lot, <laughs> lot of influence. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, uh, that, that was a reason, you know, I was kind of picking some colors to have variety on the mask, and I had to do a gold one just for a little a little shout-out to Hayabusa. Uh, watching his matches, the guy's wild. <laughs> wild for what he did in the 90s. Yeah, yeah. He crossed the, the border. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, ricochet. Uh, I mean, what, what can you say? He just switched over to AEW. I, I don't know his numbers of contracts, but I also think what you get paid is what, what you're worth. Mm -hmm. And from the sounds of it, he, he's a top star. And I mean, I don't know if y'all seen his, his work from Dragon Gate. 
yeah, where he had, he had a little more freedom. I know in WWE, you're a little more controlled for TV. Uh, the, the stuff he was able to do, man, he he might be the the top high flyer in the world right now. He's okay. got the look. He's got the presence. Uh, man, Ricochet, he, he's up there right now and someone I look forward to meet one day. And the last one, Ninja Mac, yourself. You know, um, just all I can say is hard working, trying to be disciplined, and trying to learn and grow every day. That's that's what I can do is put one foot in front of the other and try and become a better and better professional wrestler. Wow. Yes. So we are now on the uh, closing segment. So as usual, my partner, Benoit, a.k.a. Uh, Nostradamus Ben. It's all about the French prophet. So that was, <laughs> was uh, is the nickname. So He was my grandfather. And he will, <laughs> <laughs> he will uh, try to predict the future of our guests. Uh, go ahead, my friend. In Jamaic, it was an honor to... Uh... To, to have you in the Howard podcast, of course. Thank you so much for the interview. Okay, uh, my prediction is uh, probably uh, maybe in a few months or a few, few years, you're going to sign a look at lucrative contract uh, with uh, maybe NJPW, maybe WWE, AEW, or TNA. That's good. You well, deserve it. I appreciate you. Thank you, guys. I said I'm going to keep working, and we'll see what the future holds. Awesome. So you're watching the Wrestle Rock uh, podcast, uh, season six. Uh, we were with uh, one of the best eye flying in the world. I'm talking about Ninja Mac. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation. It's super appreciated. So we wish you all the best and be careful for your uh, three way match oh, yeah. tomorrow. So and good luck. Uh, I believe this uh, this match is available on IWG, uh, IWP, uh, IWP, IWGP, GP, the the the, the platform, uh, the online platform. If my I, I oh, believe it's oh, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe IWTV, 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 IWTV. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, IWTV, exactly. So if you want to see a really good match, uh, that's a really good opportunity. If you don't. Um, no, uh, Mr. Mac, honestly, he, um, you can watch him yes, in you uh, on YouTube. Yes, you better watch him, honestly. Thank you so much, Mr. Mac. It's super appreciated for your time. Hey, thank you all for having me, listeners. If you haven't gone out and do so, please go subscribe to the Wrestle Rock podcast. Thank you, YouTube, so much. Instagram, Twitter, all the platforms. And if you haven't done so, go subscribe to Ninja Mac, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and you can bet that. Yes, and uh, for every wrestling promoter uh, in Canada, uh, but mostly in the eastern uh, area, if you want a really good uh, wrestling uh, superstar, international superstar, honestly, I recommend this guy in, in front of you. So Anytime. Yeah, so we keep in touch, and if uh, any uh, wrestling promoter... Uh, contact me. I will uh, send you a, a message, my friend. Uh, mercy. Mercy. <laughs> Thank you so much. And uh, talk to you soon, my friend. Thank you. You have a wonderful day. Goodbye.